Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Foundations. 5,600 copies. Wow. The accuracy of them, 99.5%. Yeah, so when people say that it's been changed or distorted, it's a falsehood. It's absolutely a falsehood. Foundations, understanding the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. With Robbo Robinson and Mandy Warby. Critics of the Bible often say it's been corrupted or distorted over time and can't be trusted. Mandy, how do you respond to that? False. It's a falsehood. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, I've done quite a bit of research, as has many, 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 many people over the centuries done a lot of research about just how trustworthy and reliable the Bible is. But the biggest argument or criticism has been that the oldest manuscripts we had up until 1947 there was quite a, a long gap between when they were supposedly written and mm. the, the ones that we had that were dated. And so people were saying, you cannot trust the Bible. It's kind of like what happens with the game of Chinese whispers, mm. that over a period of time, it just gets distorted and distorted and distorted. But again, people don't understand the culture and they don't understand Jewish tradition. And I want to share a little bit about the traditions or the disciplines of the scribes and the, the, the scribes, the rules of engagement for a scribe, because it was, um, it was a very honoured profession, years and years and years of, of training. And the apprenticeship of the scribe was rigorous mm. and the rules that they had to abide by were unbelievable. Yeah. And I'll share those in a little bit. But before we look at how reliable the scriptures are, I want to talk a little bit about some other ancient manuscripts that nobody ever questions Mm. on how trustworthy or reliable they are. Yep, they're just accepted as being, yep, guaranteed. We know that this was written by them at this time. Absolutely. If something was written by Julius Caesar, well, it has to be authentic Mm -hmm. and 100% accurate. Okay, so here's a few names that you might recognize. Pliny, Pliny the philosopher. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, he apparently wrote something or said something in AD 61 to 113. Okay, but the earliest manuscript we have is from AD 50, which means there's 750 years between when he supposedly said something to when it was actually written down. There are only seven copies in existence and there's no no, no known way to know how accurate it is. That's that's a big gap, isn't it? 750 years. They get better. (laughs) Herodotus. You know Herodotus? You've heard of him. You don't Mm -hmm. know him personally? Yeah, not personally. No. no. (laughs) We're not Facebook friends. (laughs) (laughs) No. Uh, Herodotus lived between 480 and 425, which is supposedly when he said what he said. The earliest uh, documentation we have is from AD 900. 1,300 years wow. between saying it and having it written down. The number of copies, eight in existence. And yet people would just accept that uh, what he wrote is what he wrote. And, yeah, yeah no question. question. It. Yeah. Never question it. Uh, Julius Caesar. Everybody's heard of Julius Caesar. He lived between 140, uh, 100 and the year 44 BC. His words weren't written down f- until AD 900. That's at a 1,000-year gap. Ten copies in existence. Again, they don't know how wow. accurate. Tacitus. He lived around 100 AD, and it wasn't until 1100 AD, a thousand years later, that his words were written down. 20 copies in existence, no way of knowing the um, Mm. accuracy. Aristotle, he lived 384, between 384 and 322 BC. 1100 AD is the earliest documentation. 1400 years is the gap. 49 copies. Again, how do you know if they're accurate? Well, 49 copies in comparison, like, say, to Pliny with seven, that's actually a lot. But once again, I mean, it's not really that much when you talk about this, uh, you know, being able to put some sort of weight or, you know, accuracy on what they've said. Precisely. So let's look at the New Testament, okay, the first or the Second Testament scriptures. It was written... In the first century AD, between 50 and 100 AD, remember Jesus died around 33, 34 Mm -hmm. AD. What was written was written within the lifetimes of the authors. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's just say around the second century AD is when we have the oldest copies, manuscripts we've got. That's 100 years, less than 100 years from the time that it happened Mm -hmm. to the time that were written down. How many copies are there? 5,600 copies. Wow. The accuracy of them, 99.5%. Amazing. 
Yeah, so when people say that it's been changed or distorted, it's a falsehood. It's absolutely mm. a falsehood. That's the New Testament scriptures. What about the Old Testament scriptures? Well, first of all, I want to tell you a little bit about the practice of the scribes because this gets really, really exciting. When a scribe had to sit down and copy a Torah scroll, first of all, he had to have ceremonial washing in a mikveh. Today, we would call that a baptism, but a ceremonial washing. He had to be ceremoniously, mm. spiritually pure. When he was writing, he had to constantly be cleaning the nib of his pen so that there were no distortion in the letters. There could only be a certain number of letters per line. There had to be spaces between the letters so none of the letters were touching. When he was copying a word, he couldn't say, oh, okay, the word is beginning, so I'll write beginning. No, he had to copy B and then the B. Then the next letter, then the next letter, always referring back to the original. Mm -hmm. If he was writing the name of God, he had to have ceremonial cleansing before writing that name. The pen had to be clean. There had to be not too much ink on it. And as he was writing the name of God, even if the king entered into the room and called on him, he had to ignore the king and continue writing the name of God so as not to defile it. (laughs) Um, Every... Every piece of, because when you have a scroll, the scroll is made up of various pages that are sewn together. Mm-hmm. Okay, the, the, the preparation of the scroll, everything had to be kosher and prepared a certain way. The same with their pen, the same with the ink. Um, each Hebrew letter has a numerical value, which means at the end of any page, they're all added up to make sure that they come to the exact number as the original. Wow. If there is a mistake made, it has to be marked. If a second mistake is made, it has to be marked. If a third mistake is made, that's discarded altogether, and they well, start, start again. Over, well. well, three you can have three, but after that, you mm-hmm. it all has to be. And then, and because it contains the word of God and even His name, they don't just tear it up and get rid of it. They have like a funeral, a burial service. Oh, wow. They bury it with respect because it contains the name of God, and you don't destroy something that has God's name in it. Mm. That is why even today, Jews, when they write the name of God, it could be G D. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, or many of them don't even write the name God. They'll call him Hashem, the Hebrew word for the name. Wow. They don't even want to say it because coming from a, a fallen human being's lips is enough to defile it. Wow. Such is their reverence. When yeah. they when they read from the scroll, they never touch it with their fingers. They have a long stick that's got a little pointer on the end of it called a yad, and they use that to follow along so they don't touch it and defile it. Oh, wow. Such is the reverence yeah. they have. If uh, When a scroll gets old and it's worn out, again, they bury it. They uh, have it. They, they store it in a, a very special, elaborate box called an ark to protect it and keep it mm. safe. The reverence they have is beyond our imaginations. Yeah. And so, when they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, so here I get to the Dead Sea Scrolls. When they found these. And they started to unfold them. First of all, they found every book in the Bible except for the book of Esther and a whole lot of writings that the Essenes, this is a religious community of Jews who rejected Judaism at the time because of the corruption of the priesthood in particular. They were the Sadducees in the temple and they lived a very monastic lifestyle out in the Judean wilderness uh, right near the Dead Sea. We love going there because Mm. of the significance of this find. The the greatest, most important archaeological discovery of of the 20th century was the Dead Sea Scrolls. When they opened them up, very carefully, they were very old, (laughs) Um, they discovered that they were identical to the oldest then known manuscript. And these were a thousand years older than the oldest manuscripts we currently have. Mm. And modern Hebrew readers and writers could read this ancient Hebrew. So there was very, very, very little deviation in all this 2,000 years. And the scriptures were pretty much 99.9% accurate. And the only thing that might have been changed was something like, you know, leaving out a, a small connecting word like ah or something like that, yeah. which didn't change the meaning or Amazing. essence of the scriptures. Yeah. So when people say you can't trust the scriptures, I would say that's baloney. <laughs> <laughs> they are so accurate. They're the most accurate ancient historical documents on planet Earth today compared to everything else. They are the most accurate. You can trust your Bible. And certainly, as you say, when you compare it with some of those other ones where you've got, uh, you know, the length of time is yeah. just a fraction of what it was. Yeah. The number of manuscripts is multiple times more than what it was. Yeah. Certainly is it's in amazing. comparison. Mm-hmm. Incredible. 
So when we return in our next program, we're going to explore the first Jerusalem Council and exploring what it was like for for Gentiles to come in uh, to the church. So looking forward to exploring that some more on Foundations. This has been Foundations, a look at the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. For study notes, resources and more, see vision.org.au slash foundations. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.